Hezbollah from the north is now getting involved in some way. Rockets, potential invasion. But, but the, there's a lot of fog of war going on. So that now, just so we're clear, here's Israel underneath. Down to the south is Hamas. Israel's amassing in the south, attacking Hamas. Now you have Hezbollah in the north. There's Hezbollah. The, the, it's an ugly bit of business. Iran's involved. The Biden administration completely inept, trying to just hold together or patch together their Iran deal. This thing is going to be a mess of messes. Now, I said all that, not so you'll stop following it. We're going to keep you updated on the big things whenever those things come. I said all that just so you can just prepare yourself for some rough days ahead of various bombs and explosions and people dead. And, and let's hope, let's hope more than anything, this can end. Let's hope it can end because it's going to be terrible. And we just have the worst politicians here. You know, at a time when we need guidance, where we need wisdom, we need, you know, sober, logical thinking. And it goes way beyond just Democrats or just, just Joe Biden. It's way beyond that. I mean, it's freaking Republicans, too. Lindsey Graham. Gosh, I can't stand Lindsey Graham. Well, for every Israeli or American hostage executed uh, by Hamas, we should uh, take down an Iranian oil refinery. The only way you're going to keep this war from escalating is to hold Iran accountable. If Hamas kills one American or Israeli hostage, we're going to blow up your oil refineries and put you out of business. It is now time to take the war to the Ayatollah's backyard. Okay. Well, look, there's a big, big, big war going on right now. I'm worried about how ugly it's going to be. But I'll tell you what I'm not going to do is listen to Lindsey Graham. He hasn't been this excited since he went to thunder from down under. Joining me now, my friend Dave Reboy. He is somebody who's a national security expert. He's my friend. He's someone who knows a ton about this region. He's going to not give us emotional vomit like Lindsey Graham. Just tell us what's, what's going on. Dave? Okay. Hamas. Hezbollah. Most Americans, many Americans, focus on themselves and their own problems. No judgment. But they don't really understand the difference between these two. What is the difference? Sure. Well, they one is Shia, the other is Sunni, but they are united in the fact that they're both uh, they're both terror proxy armies uh, sponsored by Iran, which is Shia. So for the last uh, you know for the last many many years, the Iranians have had no problem at all uh, um, uh, funding uh, Sunni groups um, in order to, I mean, this is how the Iranians conduct their foreign policy. You know, we will go and we will trade with other nations or we will have diplomatic relations with, um, you know, with, with other countries or, or, or maybe even send our military in, in case, you know, if, if, we, if we decide to do that. What the Iranians do in order to protect, project power in, the, in order to sort of encircle the Middle East and take over the region is they will go to a country like Lebanon with the example of Hezbollah and Syria with the example of, uh, of Hezbollah and Assad or Yemen with the Houthis or, um, or Hamas in Gaza. And they will basically set up a terror army that grows and grows and grows and is violent and takes over the government there. So right now you have Iran in control of, uh, you know, four Middle Eastern capitals. And this is how they, they exercise their power. I mean, just to just to go back to Lindsey Graham for a quick second, um, you know what he said was crazy for a number of reasons, and I think I think he totally discredits the cause of you know people like me and 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 other sane people who walk around and say you know Iran is a threat, but the way to you know the, the way not to deal with this is exactly to, li to listen to Lindsey Graham. Dave. It Lesbon or Lesbonon, jeez, I can't talk. Hezbollah and Lebanon, I merged those two worlds. Okay, uh, people look at this and they see these attacks from Hezbollah and they want to know, okay, is Lebanon the enemy of Israel? Why doesn't Lebanon stop Hezbollah? But as you just mentioned, what they don't understand, similar to what Hamas did in Palestine, Hezbollah has taken over Lebanon. It's controlled by a terror group. Do I have that wrong? Um, no, you have that completely right. Uh, Lebanon was at one point the most uh, beautiful and prosperous country in the Middle East, and then the Palestinians oh. came in. Um, they in in the 1970s they started um, they started tearing the country apart, 
and Arafat and the PLO were based out of there. You had, it, it, you know, Carlos the Jackal. It became the world capital of, um, you know, kind of Islamic terrorism there. Um, and then, uh, you know, there was big Beirut civil war. I mean, we sent in, um, we sent in the Marines, uh, uh, Reagan did, in order to try to, uh, you know, calm things down over there. And, and of course, you know, he pulled them out after the big Beirut bombing. Now, the Beirut bombing was uh, of, of U.S. soldiers was done by Hezbollah, which, um, which is Iran's uh, terror proxy that ended up swallowing whole basically the entire Lebanese government. So, um, yeah. you know, it, it is no longer a country. It is just a terror group that, you know, runs some of the functions of a country. Dave, Israel's military prowess is well known by its lovers and its haters, but it's being attacked currently on two fronts, Hamas, Hezbollah. They're planning on going into Gaza, which I am, I think I'm one of the only people who's very, very concerned about this whole thing. All I see is sniper nests and IED heaven there. And this is all funded by a nation that's not a joke. Iran is no joke economically. They, they, can, they can provide certainly plenty of weapons and intelligence here. Dave, I think a lot of people are acting like Israel's victory is a foregone conclusion as it always has been. Man, I, I'm concerned. Um, I share your concern. Um, I think that, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny people were comparing this last uh, horrific barbaric attack um, the, um, to the Yom Kippur War because it came 50 years since the Yom Kippur War in 1973, uh, when when um, you know when when Egypt and, and other Arab nations attacked uh, attacked Israel in a in a surprise attack on um, you know the Jews' most holiest day when everyone is um, is is fasting and in the synagogue. So things were really touch and go, and it's been 50 years since. Uh, you know, obviously, the, uh, the Israelis were able to win in '73, largely thanks to Richard Nixon and the United States sending weapons um, that uh, that Israel badly needed, sort of at the at the eleventh hour. Um, and since then, since '73, we've had this image, as you say, that you know Israel is is completely. Um, you know, is completely unbeatable. And, you know, there have been good reasons to see that. There have been good reasons to believe that. Um, but I really don't think, I mean, supporters of Israel in the United States and around the world, I don't really think we should take things for granted. Nobody is happy with the idea of Israel facing a two-front war in the north and also in the south and Gaza. And then increasingly you have, um, you know, kind of the northern war plus which is you already have Assad and uh, and Iran's Shia militias gathered in Syria uh, at the um, at the border of the Golan Heights um, on you know on Israel's northeast border um, and and uh, supposedly they're ready to go. So Iran is sending all of its proxy armies there. Now it remains to be seen. I've always thought that Hezbollah unfortunately would join the battle. Um, at one point or, no, or another, sort of the idea was when Israel would kind of find itself bogged down in um, in Gaza in a in a uh, in a land war there, a ground invasion. That's when uh, the North would kick off. That's when Hezbollah would choose, or Iran would tell Hezbollah to say, "Okay, it's go time." Um, whether or not that's going to happen, um, you know, I mean, it, it remains to be seen. I have a hard time believing at the end of the day, even despite the, uh, you know, even despite the, um, you know, how much, how tightly Lebanon, uh, how tightly Hezbollah controls Lebanon, that the Lebanese government is, you know, is, is fine with becoming suicide bombers along with Gaza. I mean, this whole story is the story of, uh, in Gaza, it's the story of you know, a bunch of Palestinians and Hamas deciding, "Hey, we're going to be the we're going to be the suicide bombers. Um, we're going to sacrifice ourselves as a nation as suicide bombers for Iran." And it seems yeah, like, like they're good with that. And I just hope that other nations will will not be good at that. You know, will not be good with that as well. <laughs> 